Okay, welcome back. So, in the last class, we started on a beautiful subject of which goes under kinetics of phase transition, and but it is essentially a thermodynamic treatment. And we have included this in this course because of the generality. In fact, phase transition itself, if you have noticed, is quite general. Uh, it does not talk of any given system, it is applicable to all systems. That means, I can I am talking of nucleation, not just of gas liquid. At the same breath, I am talking of freezing, formation of ice nuclei, melting, formation of water inside ice. Uh, I am talking of uh, magnetic transition, the presence of a magnetic field when it is first order, in the absence of magnetic field is second order. The, why the grand generality is appeals to some people, this grand generality at the same time makes many people uncomfortable, because people many times like to think in terms of specific systems, specific examples. But there are things where generality is extremely helpful and useful, because you learn one thing you can apply to all different systems. As I was telling uh, my ex student in Japan, you know, you know he, he learned uh, uh, these things in a class, you know, this uh, nucleation and spinal decomposition. He found it is an experimental physical chemist, not my own student, but he was just taking the course and he found it extremely helpful. Even now, he is so grateful whenever he comes to his professor now in uh, IIT Madras or IIT Chennai. Whenever he comes to Bangalore, he makes sure that he uh, comes and sees me. Such is the reach of such a such a problem uh, that you, you you can apply to almost many many disciplines okay so now we are trying to we are trying to get this thing going so basic idea then uh, is that uh, basic idea then is that we have this this kind of a scenario and this is delta g r and this is r and this is the critical nucleus and you have to cross this barrier. I uh, describe the analogy with chemical kinetics where it is we know how to do it. Here we know part D because we know the probability of being in the top has to be Boltzmann e to the power minus delta G star that we know, but you do not know how to calculate the rate of going over. Uh, in chemical kinetics is a bond breaking and uh, or twisting there we can write the detailed motion of that uh, molecule rotating or bond breaking. But here we do not have that, so how do we get it? This was the one which was done by Zeldovich as I told you is a nuclear physicist. So, the way it is now done is there are two factors is the probability or number of critical uh, if you consider rate as a flow like water going through a pipe, the uh, rate of water we talk of rate of water flow. Similarly, a new phase is forming and from the old phase and if we can see that the rate uh, as a time independent process, uh, then I you know then how, how, how do I so, I will say okay, number of nucleus at the top a critical nucleus number of critical nuclei E and C and the that is uh, I can find on the top of the barrier and then at the rate it will go over. So, this I said is the same thing that we do in chemical kinetics this part and this part is the one that is non-trivial and I need to calculate that. So, if I now have a nucleus sitting here at the top, then what would let it if I am sitting on the top, a nucleus sitting in the top, what will make it go over? It will make it go over if another particle comes and impinges on that. So, I need a practice for another more particles actually not one several, but this is the radius r. So, this is already a pretty macroscopic coordinate. So, by changing small r means several monomers is coming. So, these monomers are going to impringe on this. They are very, very interesting thing, you know. In many of examples, many problems, uh, we get this, this quantity. I remember I passed a comprehensive at uh, my uh, in Brown University 
because I could argue this one. This was the problem given in a comprehensive exam in PhD exam without telling us and within that time I did norm nucleation and uh, but uh, I could figure it out by using kinetic theory of gases that okay the number of molecules that can pass. I realized that the, what, what could be then I said okay we all done in uh, Maxwell Boltzmann kinetic theory of gases that there is the unit area of a surface and the pressure is nothing but the molecules coming and uh, colliding with it. What are the number of molecules colliding with it? That is within certain uh, parallel pipe. Remember we draw the parallel pipe and okay, these are the number of molecules in this and which has the velocity towards the wall. So, so, so the rate of impringement of monomers is very similar logic and on the surface, but then also the surface area of the nucleus, larger the surface area more. Now, you may argue why I am taking different surface area because in different temperature the size of the chemical nucleus is different. Remember R star is 2 gamma by delta G V and delta G V is temperature dependent. So, as temperature becomes larger and larger and I will come to this little bit more detail now or maybe I should just do now and then come back because it is a very important thing. I had it in my last I maybe forgot it. So, if I now uh, plot this delta G r against r at different temperature, then I know gamma is also temperature dependent surface tension, but much weaker than this thing. Delta G v r however, when they are at equilibrium. Uh, two phases old and new then this is 0, delta G v is 0. So, R star is infinity. So, uh, when I go little bit below then R star uh, 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 is start decreasing, but still can be very large. So, I can consider the following situ situation that I can um, uh, say okay, this is when it is large it very close to coexistence then it uh, so, as I lower the temperature, so if it is uh, T 3, T 2, T 1, then T 1 is greater than T 2 greater than T 3. So, barrier comes down, size becomes small as delta G increases. So, this is the reason why the surface area depends very strongly on temperature, then also depends from system to system. Uh, because this uh, this temperature dependence and the free energy landscape completely varies like if I talking of melting it is different from that of freezing or more than that you know more from gas liquid condensation that is what I wanted to tell. So, this this nucleus with the surface S and C sitting. So, then I would be the rate would be proportional to the rate of impringement let me call it beta i and S and C. So, this should be proportional to that and then I need a rate to go over that I call this z. Then I can go now and write my, uh, so this is the expression then. So, this is the rate probability of having uh, a, a number of critical size nuclei that is n c. Then this is the rate of impringement on the on the surface and then the probability there is also a probability that during the unit time unit time this uh, beta is the rate of impringement per unit time per unit time it can also disappear that means it can also come down here. So, there is a non equilibrium process and this is what it brings it very close to chemical kinetics that I will discuss uh, a little bit later. That effect that it can come down is included through this factor z, which is called the Zeldovich factor. Now, we will go through the calculation, and the calculation is a little uh, complicated, and uh, but we have to uh, live with it. Uh, this is one of the uh, probably after you our uh, canonical, canonical ensemble calculation, this is the most. Uh, detailed calculation that we will be doing, but we have to do that anyway and we will we'll, we'll go through that.
with the heroism. Uh, it is uh, so. This is the thing we have to calculate z. How do I calculate z? The way I calculate z now is that I co consider as if a train is moving. So the growth of cluster is going like this. This can also. So I add one. It goes there. Then uh, I add one more. A n minus one is becoming A. Then A n plus n plus. It of course disappears. That I'll consider later. Right now I am uh, trying to set up a train, and my aim is that just as you are uh, uh, in front of a, if you have stood in front of a passing train, then this compartment after compartment are going in front of you. When the train moves in a steady state velocity, then what happens? Each compartment comes to you at a regular interval. Okay, and that's a steady state. Steady state means just the flow of water in a steady state. That means it's a time-independent process. So I want to find a time-independent rate. Rate is always when rate is a constant, is a time-independent. It gives a steady flow. Complete independent uh, time independence is equilibrium when nothing is happening. Okay, that is a. Uh, if I take a derivative of all the quantities, then at equilibrium, then the, though they are all zero. Concentration time derivative of concentration is zero. But here it is not. This is the next time independent thing that is steady state, but it is not equilibrium. So we have to make a distinction between equilibrium time independent process and steady state uh, time independent process. I am going to do here that steady state because I want to study the rate. Whenever I talk of a rate, it is a it is a time independent. It is a steady state. Otherwise, you don't have a rate. Then we say time in uh, time dependent rate. You know that's a different thing altogether. Okay. So now I'm going to calculate the flow as if a train. So, uh, however, this quantity that I call C and C that uh, the uh, this going over, I can write as Boltzmann. This is equilibrium. C n is an equilibrium concentration. I now change my notation. I might change my notation from R dependence to N dependence. That means, because I want to talk of adding of uh, impringement of uh, particles on, on, on these things, I and then growth I want to do in terms of number plane, the number of particles in the system. Then I know there is a one to one correspondence between radius and uh, if I assume a sphere, then then uh, volume into 4 pi by 3 r cube uh, if is a 4 pi by uh, 4 pi by 3 r cube is n number of particles and then volume v. Okay. So, that means uh, uh, r scales as uh, n to the power one third. Uh, because this volume of a one molecule, volume acquired by one molecule into number of molecules in the cluster N V that has to be 4 pi by 3 r cube, both have same dimension as volume. Okay. This is a trivial, if that is so, then I know this is uh, uh, 4 pi by 3 r cube in per unit volume, uh, then that is nothing but proportional to N and that one volume I, I absorb in N. So, that because per volume and that V I multiply, so this become dimensionless, is just per di sorry, dimension of energy, energy per particle. And now there is a surface term which is r to the power r square, r square is nothing but n to the power 2 by 2. Okay. So, my earlier expression minus 4 pi by 3 r cube plus 4 pi r square gamma that becomes minus n delta g n plus gamma n to the power 2 term. Why I am going to end representation? Because I want to add the a molecular picture, which R does not allow me a molecular picture, it allows a thermodynamic picture. Uh, because I can I could do the surface tension, but now I add a molecular picture because I am adding molecules one by one and it is flowing. And then I have the following ingredients: I have the Boltzmann distribution and I have conversion of delta G gamma to the power n to the power 3. Okay. Now I want to see that how the now I introduce a very important quantity that is F n t. F n t is time dependent. This is the probability of having a particle, a cluster, a nucleus of n particles at a time t. Okay. Now that thing is changing. 
uh, it is changing because I have a uh, uh, flow and as a result of flow that this guy, this guy is decaying by I am just saying a one way flow now. Uh, if I do the equilibrium I would need both the two sides that I will do later. So, this guy is changing because of that flow the one way flow very important the one way flow this is decreasing because molecules are moving out. So, then uh, j n minus j n minus j that is the way this is changing j n t I already wrote that is my impringement verb time dependent probability surface minus now this is very interesting. Now, this is the, uh, this n plus 1 becoming n also and that is so this is this j n t it is going to n to n plus 1. Okay. So, it is going to n to n plus 1, but it is in, in, on the other hand n plus 1 becoming n and n plus 1 becoming n by uh, by uh, by evaporating that is n plus 1. So, uh, if I consider the this guy then this guy is going on that, but in, in the in the previous step it is going to this, but on this enzyme a part of that is in, in the flow it is going at that rate, but at the part of that is coming back. So, I am just considering this process as I said I am going to consider only this process and in this process it is going by impringement, but it is also disappearing by operation. So, if amount going a, a some amount is coming back here. Now, I can do also this case, but or doing one in enough for to get me the flow. Okay. So, this is a positive a forward and this is the backward of that uh, I, I have an estimate of the rate of impringement on a surface from kinetic theory of gases as I told you the uh, Maxwell Boltzmann. F n t is a time dependent probability a very difficult thing. Right now, I will see that we do not need that. Uh, we do not we need that if it is a more difficult calculation. So, uh, and I have the surface area of n and n particle. This is disappearing of the evaporation also depends on the surface area clearly, but what, how do I? So, this I have a control S n I know S n plus 1 I know surface the surface of a sphere of DSR is n to the power 2 third I know that. I do not know what is W n plus 1 this is a very very interesting condition here. How do I find W n plus 1? Now, there comes a very very important uh, um, uh, quantity let me get a page to explain that. So, J n t beta i S n and uh, f n t minus w n plus 1 f n plus 1 t and s n plus 1. Now, we use something I go back I have to calculate this quantity and this is another beautiful thing that we use a lot in your chemical kinetics undergraduate your views we use the principle of detail balance one of the most honor a most uh, respectable principle called principle of detail balance. Onsagar used it and analyzed it in microscope irreversibility in his famous 1932 paper or irreversible thermodynamics and he got Nobel prize for that. Now, uh, principle of detail balance says that if I have now at equilibrium I have to consider back and forth steady state I got a flow you have to make a distinction. So, I have principle of detail balance is a very strong statement it says that if you are at equilibrium then it is not enough to have a time steady time independent, but each step must be individually balanced that means these step they have number of particles going up uh, in towards B to A and must be same as A to B. So, individual steps this is the principle of detail balance or microscopic reversibility extremely important that is the only condition that guarantees equilibrium. So, equilibrium means 
flux is zero. No flux. It's everything is balanced. But if we are ultimately calculating a steady state. We, we are flying a flow. But see how we are using equilibrium at the same time. This is exactly done. Many many branch. As I told you, if you enzyme catalysis, kind of thing, Michael is mentioned. Then you had the Lindemann uh, famous chemical kind of first order kinetics, unimolecular dissociation reaction. Everywhere this is used, but it was initially first done by uh, Zeldovich. Okay. Now, all of maybe all of them have done independently, but it is the same thing. At least I am just mentioning three very famous theories, but probably 10 theories uses this kind of logic. That is why I like nucleation because it is bringing so much beautiful things. So, okay, now j n equal to 0. If I put j n equal to 0, then what uh, that is an equilibrium, but I have already defined that C n is the equilibrium distribution. So, at equilibrium f n t becomes time independent, but at equilibrium f n t equilibrium is nothing but my C n. So, now I put 0 equal to beta i S n C n minus w n plus 1 C n plus 1 S n plus 1. So, what does it mean now? That means, I get w n plus 1. So, w n plus 1 this quantity now become equal to beta i S n. Uh, I take it on that side and then C n divided by C n plus 1 S n plus 1. So, this is my w n plus 1. So, I have now by using the real balance, I got an expression for w n plus 1. Let me write this down clearly because I will need it. So, w n Now, what are you going to do now? I am going to put this quantity into this equation now. Okay. So, I am going to exp this uh, expression is going to be substituted in this one. Uh, once I do that, what do I get? Sorry. Bear with me for a minute. Okay. So, I got this now. Now, I notice the following thing S n plus S n plus get cancelled and I get beta i common. So, I take beta i um, S n out, I also take C n out common, then I get F n t by C 
C n minus F n plus 1 P by C n plus 1. So, I get for J n this expression. Okay. Now, if you look at this expression, what do you see? You see a beautiful thing. You see that this quantity, this F n t and they are now, I can write it in the limit of large n, I can call it a um, time derivative. So, this thing can be written as it, because this f n plus 1 is minus, there will be minus beta i s n c n and uh, d d n d sorry sorry d d n So, j n this beautiful thing 